How was your guys' weekend? Jerry, tell me when we're live. We are? We're live. All right, let's just start over. Hello, I am Johnny English, and welcome to another wonderful episode of Middle Ages. Hello, viewers. Today we'll be following the lives of Justinian and Theodora up until their reign during the plague. You may remember me from specials such as Babes of the Byzantine Empire, Saint or Crazy, and my top-rated YouTube channel of a series devoted to the Middle Ages, Dear God, Dear God, Save Me. My time machine is broken and I'm stuck in the Middle Ages. Today I bring you something truly scrumptious, a find that shakes the very ground we walk on. This new evidence shakes the very fabric that ties time and space together. What we all thought we knew to be true for the Byzantine Empire is forever altered. Our father company and the Trump Organization acquired several ancient bathhouses from the crumbling states of Turkey and Greece. When American workers fitting a jacuzzi into a Byzantine bathhouse found a 8mm film recording hidden in the walls. This recording of Procopius' history truly is our primary source for research in the 6th century. While at times biased because, well, Jay, that's what we call him, Jay couldn't read with shit. And I, I was in charge of the history. Procopius was a prominent scholar who rose to prime historian of Just for Justinian. It is evident in his accounts that he did not think highly of the king nor the queen Theodora. Yeah, he was mean to me. Not with the sword, but with the pen was Justinian's history written. The marriage of Justinian to Theodora caused quite the marital scandal throughout the empire. 22 years his junior, a 13-year-old Theodora, was wed to Justinian I. Justinian was an average-looking, a little plump with rosy red cheeks and dark curly hair. What he lacked in stature he made up for an intellect. Theodora was a lovely woman confident, witty, and gorgeous. They were in love, but one major problem stood in Theodora's way. She was an actress and a mistress. Okay, first, Roman law forbade that kind of stuff. A farmer and an actress as emperor and empress didn't make sense. No sense. They're lower than dung. The elite, we are better than that. Marrying his mistress sent ripples through Byzantine aristocracy. It was his aunt who truly opposed the wedding. In the sight of all of respectable society, she removed her clothes. She stood there naked in their mists, except for a girl. About the groin. She was insane. And Jaybird was powerless. He just went fighting north because he wanted to return Rome to its former glory. I do, I do. Honey, eh? Where's my sword? Uh, I think I left it uh, under the chamber pot. Ah, uh, yes. Well, I am not know where I left it. <laughs> <laughs> Go and conquer all she the people. She was blind her ways. In the midst of noblemen, servants alike, she would arch her back provocatively, advertising like a peacock. Okay, I was there once, and it was mesmerizing and sickening. Well, do you I'll do it, I'll do it. So when we met, I was engaged to this guy, Orpheus, but, and he was super rich. Like, I mean, really rich. But I just knew that Peter was the one for me when we met. During the reign of Justinian, he instituted a legal code that laid a formal structure of what a citizen can and cannot do. It threw out contradictory law and outdated laws and provided the structure that sets up modern government today. So we had to move here um, because, well, my dad caught us in bed when we were just seeing each other, I guess. And, you know, we had to leave because, well, he would kill us. Uh, I'm a servant. Oh, don't be modest, honey. Tell him who you work for. Uh, I'm a servant for the Empress. And I mostly just stay at home, you know, handle the house, the kids, the usual. What do you feel about the king? Well, we're in the blue club together, and so I don't really care that he's killing people up north, and who cares about them. But it really grinds my gears because he's been raising taxes down here, and that's, it's not working for me. 
I'm back from conquering. Where are you, my little beasties? I've got tales to tell of barbarian ass I killed. Wow, uh, super, super happy to see you. Oh, I know. It feels amazing to be back with my people. I got you a book. Oh, thank you so much. I can't wait to read it. Yeah, I'm no, thrilled to be here. But everyone wasn't thrilled to see him. What? I don't like him. How come? He tried to steal my cards. Uh, my wife has these cards. They were my grandmother's cards. I mean, he's trying to take my culture away from me. My grandparents' culture. I mean, yeah, some people call us pagans, but we're not. During the reign of Justinian, we see a dramatic decline in the Greco-Roman polytheism. As also being Christian, Justinian went out of his way to destroy and persecute much of the culture that was once thriving, but because it wasn't Christian, it wouldn't survive. Why am I talking now? People need to know. Constantinople and the Byzantine Empire the Byzantine were divided. Violence was in the streets, and political parties crazy. were fighting for control. She wasn't fit to be our empress. Her sister, dressed like a slave girl, in front of very, very important people. A peacock, pet, grains out of her butt, right out of her butt. I heard a story from my friend who was a servant there that she just she took whatever she choose wants. whatever boy Whoever or girl or anything that she wants to make love to. There was only one place she loved to. She was champion of the bedroom. So what do you think about the rumors about Theodore possibly sleeping with servants at the castle? Oh, uh, I don't, I don't think so. That's those are just rumors. That's what? definitely what? not true. Rumors? Oh, Honey, I the woman had no shame. Just myths. Like, they just go no event was too scandalous. She'd do it all. She'd do everyone. Theodora sucks. She takes advantage of you and she just ruins everything. And she gets all. While we don't know if Procopius's claims of Theodora's are absolutely true, we do know that they are in for trouble. <laughs> what? A horse race. Riots would break out, and those riots would race yes, into the streets talk, of Constantinople. Do we love Constantinople? <laughs> Too <laughs> many right, different right, groups vying for power. A multitude of angry citizens <laughs> and a murder at a chariot race would ignite the ticking time bomb that is Constantinople. Seeing this political firestorm and struggling to maintain peace with Persia, Justinian fled as his city burned. Uh, what I miss? Uh, honey, I think we should be getting going now. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> and where was Justinian? Caught in his palace, scared, sniveling. It was sad, embarrassing. I. I don't say much good about Justinian, or Theodora, but Theodora here, she was incredible. She accepted none of Justinian's cowardice. She said, Ingo, the sea's right over there, we're rich, you'll survive. But for me, noble is the noble shroud. It was Theodora's job to hold the country together, but it was Justinian's. Job. Due to the riots, many churches and buildings were destroyed, but also, they were rebuilt. He liked to build things. He liked to build things. He just loved building things. <laughs> I do! I do love building things! This time period led to many masterpieces in the field of architecture and art. There is one thing Justinian and Theodore could not run from, and that was the plague. Don't get me started about the plague. It was bad. Really, really bad. 
Uh, well, Grandma died. Grandpa died. Our neighbors died. Our our children died. I think I think that's it. Uh, and our scribe died. Due to the enormous death toll of the Justinian plague, Constantinople and the Byzantine Empire were at an economic and social standstill. construction on some buildings had to stop. I mean, the workers were getting sick, so a lot of buildings that were being built had to be stopped. On the plus side, the Trumpian casino and brothel got shut down, so that's always good. I, I mean, look, it, it was a terrific brothel, all right? It was going to be great. We weren't going to spare any expense. It was going to be big, beautiful, unbelievable, giraffes, elephants. There was a fat manatee that we called the human manatee, all right, people? We had everything. And what can I say? It's the workers. You know, they're, they're lazy, they're stupid. Uh, they just drop dead right in front of my building. I mean, it's really disgusting, quite frankly. And um, I'm sick of it. Windows so. overlooking the sea. People. Uh, stone columns, golden ceilings. I mean, we didn't spare a single expense. On it, it was going to be a great brothel. Uh, businessmen from Rome, Syria, even China. People were going to come and they were going to love my brothel. All right, there's no problem with my brothel. All right, you can ask anyone. What are you saying? No, 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 no. Listen to me. Listen. Look, shh. Shh. Look, yes, we postponed the building of the Trumpius Casino, but let me tell you why we did this. All right? It was going to be huge. And, and it will be huge once we recover from this play. Oh, come on, Matt. Give me a break. Okay, give me a break. No, listen. Look, I did not run my company into the ground, my customers were just dying, okay? 